Well, I see that, that we're live um, and we're, we're going out. Uh, we have a couple members that had called in and said that they would be a little bit late, but that they, they would be here. Uh, what we need to do this go around is to have some discussion and create a, a workshop type environment and go over a, a few items. So with that, um, we'd, I'd like to have us just proceed and I'd be happy to give you an update on the Healthy Communities grant application that, that we had. I know um, the last time that we had a meeting we got um, shall we say, throw, thrown out due to Mother Nature because of the snowstorm, so we didn't uh, didn't get to get all our heads together. I did work with Courtney over at the Health Department after that, and we uh, pulled some very rough numbers together and got a lot of the information that we needed to, to do, so we made it in advance of the February 28th deadline and applying for the Healthy Communities grant. So, uh, as we looked at it, we discovered that in order to submit for the grant, we did not need to specify the exact locations. For example, of where yeah. we wanted to have the the bike racks, just to indicate the number and approximate. So that right. was enough, and we clarified with the people who were administering the grant. You know, okay, how how much do we need to to deal? And they were saying ballpark is great. Right. So we submitted some rough numbers. <coughs> we are applying with the eight thousand dollar figure. Very cool. Do you remember when the, what the timeline is now for when they uh, you know, approve things and... Uh, I think, it would, no, uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, get definitive. It'll be a couple months at least yeah. on that. Um, <clears throat> but I know Courtney was trying to see what she could do to work with uh, the folks out at Job Corps to mm -hmm. see if they could uh, assist in, in putting some of the uh, items together. The eight thousand will include not only the uh, the actual racks themselves, but any cost for uh, installing the concrete that would be needed for that, and so on. Yeah. We had some money left over, so we're applying that towards the uh, street reflective type paint, so we can do more painting on the on the roads and, yeah. and that type of thing. You know, maybe do um, some of the three feet. It's the law type thing. And, and so, yeah. Yeah, and additional signs as well. Keep people aware that uh, what we want to do is is promote the whole idea of pedestrians uh, walking and uh, bike spiking and yeah. that sort of thing going on. There. Well, having bike racks downtown be really cool, especially with events this fall. Oh this yeah, I'd like to have it in by then. Nice. Yeah. Um, as as word has gotten around, it's been interesting. People have said, "Is there, you know, can can we get a bike rack in our neighborhood? You know, can we put another bike rack, say, up in the library? Can we have a bike rack up in Highland?" And those are the kinds of things we'd like to to do. Is that at the major nodes, hmm. not just downtown, <clears throat> but connect the parks um, to here as well, and that'll get us into what we we want to talk about later on um, in our meeting with the complete streets and tying together different modes of travel besides just the automobile variety. Yeah, I liked the idea last time we were here that we brought up Highland and Mineral Wells and getting those places so people would actually have a good destination. Right. So I think that would be very important. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, the, I remember the estimate for the powder coating that we got being really high. Mm -hmm. We did job court. Um, but I know there are some places that do things a lot cheaper. Right. So. And we'll probably have to, to take it out of town uh, yeah. to have it done. But there's, I think long term. There's somebody that's a good up idea. near Stillwater that um, a guy that was having something done and it was mm -hmm. very cost efficient. Mm -hmm. Hey, Melissa. Hello. Here, have a seat. Is this one not taken? Right. No, it, it's all yours. Oh, my. Okay. We're, we're on, being videoed tonight and going out live. So, just wanted to let you know, oh. uh, but there is fresh coffee, and uh, we're using a workshop format tonight, just going over uh, items. But yeah, I think the, the whole idea of, as a transportation authority, what we want to get out there is connecting to the downtown, and you're right, bringing in the parks, other locations that um, people would be traveling from. Mm -hmm. um, so on and then maybe as 
time goes by, we get future grants and that kind of thing. We can start putting them out in the, <coughs> the community more, maybe at the, the churches down at the down at the lake. Do a so people can ride from you know Guthrie Lake to to Liberty Lake. Yeah. Eventually, we've got a, a lot of plans for Liberty Lake recreation wise, yeah. and I think if there's a spot where people can actually stop and and uh, leave their bikes for uh, a hike or something, then sure. that'll promote that whole that whole thing. What does this stand for? No, I'm late. Oh, I haven't gotten into that, oh, okay. into that yet, but okay. we'll be getting there. Um, so that's just bringing you up on, on that. I don't have an exact date when that will come back, but just know that that $8,000 grant uh, through Healthy Communities and with uh, Courtney's help and Justin's help with the uh, uh, Logan County Health Department. We got it in, got it in on time, got it complete. So that was that was great. Any any other questions on that? We're on number three. Okay. We got a couple people coming to, but they're also in uh, in other meetings. We'll be here later. Okay. The next thing I'd like to give you an update on is the Safe Routes to School project. You know, we got a um, a good sized grant, about two hundred k, um, on the books to assist with sidewalks. That was from ODA. And we put that towards Fogarty School. This has been a long, long-term project. We met with ODOT, I want to say probably two or three weeks ago, out at the site along with our engineer um, to take a look at, at the site. They, ODOT wanted to do a, a final clarification, make sure they were, they were good with everything. And we thought we were all good with everything, too. The engineer had drawn up some preliminary plans. <coughs> Um, so the Leoda people took a look at it and basically said the site's going to be exceedingly difficult to build on. The engineer thought it might be okay. Um, they put their heads together and said probably not the best ideal lengthwise. We could probably get more linear feet if we put it in another location instead of coming off um, the off the back street that we wanted to do. They are strongly recommending, and you know, when when the strong recommendation comes from the powers that be in Oklahoma City, you just say yes and go forward. They strongly re recommended that we take a look at putting the sidewalk down Wentz and going down uh, that way. That particular area is a little more uh, is is more flat and wouldn't require as much site work uh, to do. Wouldn't so. Right now, the engineer is taking a look at, at that alternative. Okay, not crazy, but about the idea of directing kids onto a, a more highly trafficked road, mm -hmm. but uh, that, that they're, was, they're they're paying the bill. So, oh uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, we had a, a lot of discussion uh, regarding that. Uh, some of the folks, we had several folks out um, walking the site with us from municipal services as well. And that exact comment was brought up as like, okay, wait a second, if it's over here, uh, you're walking down a residential street, if it's over here, it's a main thoroughfare. Mm -hmm. um, they felt we could keep it safer over in that area. There would be more eyes on the children as well and, and so on. The main difficulty appears to be coming from the east-west um, location just south of Fogarty, that the transition as it goes past the, the little play area there, mm -hmm. that it goes right into an area where there are um, steps and it it looked to be very problematic from ODOT's perspective. And okay. they just said, if their comment was, if you do it the way that you all have designed it, it won't be in, in compliance with, with the regs that they have to enforce, basically ADA. So that's, that's where, uh, yeah, you bet, they are. So that's the uh, the update on, on that area. So we're looking at coming south from Fogarty, going about two, at least two blocks, and then cutting west about two blocks and hitting um, sidewalks that are out that way. So rather than going from Fogarty, uh, I'm sorry. Going east. Okay. Okay. Visualize going south from Fogarty, going two blocks, and then going east. So and we're still getting into that southeast neighborhood. Yes. Okay. Yeah. As opposed to going 
going east immediately from Fogarty and then down and then down. We're going okay. south immediately and then east. So we're making the rectangle coming in from another another okay. direction. Ooh, hey. Hey. So we were just doing an update on the uh, Safe Routes to School project. Uh, same set there. And it just doesn't have a oh ed an agenda mm -hmm. item. So that's that's where we are on that with um, the Fogarty uh, sidewalk project. Still alive, still well. Who do you work with on the Safe Routes program? Uh, a lot with Justin. Um, I mean at ODOT. Ernestine Ember. Ernestine. Yeah. She's now the transportation director. She just took a position. Seriously. Yeah. yeah, I just went to a meeting with her last week. She took over transportation manager. Wow. Well then, she knows her. Now she's over my. Now she's over public Is that transportation. That old position. That's Ken Larue's. Old wow. position. Mm -hmm. okay. That's probably a really good thing. Yeah, that could yeah. help us. Seems like we're so nice lady. Yeah. I'll bring it to speed afterwards. Okay. On uh, number three, and number four. Any questions so far on those, except from you, John? I, with the the educational part of that money, which is funneled through the health department, the the last thing I've checked on with that, um, I need to re revisit this. I, I talked with Anthony Gibbs with the police force about sure uh, uh, getting some kind of speed. Um, um, system they're on wits mm -hmm. so especially now that we're talking about you know throwing kids down that direction mm -hmm. i think that becomes a little more of a priority to get s some more um uh speed enforcement kind of things on that street mm -hmm. so i'll i'll get back with anthony and, and uh, talk some more about him about get the police to actually pick something out we can buy some kind of like you know you're going this fast kind of signage mm -hmm. or um you know, you're, you're exceeding the speed limit kind of mm -hmm. thing, so. All those things that, that monitor you and flash the light deal. Yeah, like, I think there's, there's, a, there's a wide range of um, uh, different versions of it. Um, when I talked with Damon the first time, he said that the, the kind he likes the best are kinds that um, actually, like, you know, uh, store the data and can compile it over a long period of time to show you, like, statistics on the traffic. Wow. But I think... It's like the, the price on those was prohibitive, I, th I think. I'll have to go back and So look. we have to buy all this equipment if we get to this. Uh, we don't or have we to, get it's it an option. The, I think it would be a really good thing to have there. get through the grant at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, can you do that through the theory. education component? Yes. Yeah. We looked mm -hmm. at, at some of that through yeah. the construction component, and you're right, it was you know, more money than yeah. we I th could. I think pull from. The, 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 I'd, it's I'd, 200 thousand. Yeah, I had sent so Ernestine an, an email a while back asking her, and it sounded like we, we could buy that out of the educational. It's, it's part of educating the public on you know the the safe routes you know sure. concepts, so we can we can make it fit through that kind of idea. I wonder if we could people. put a sign above that as well, because if you do one of those where you're saying the speed limit, you can say safe route to school or something like that, so they know. So. What we're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that would, that would be a good idea if we can, you know, take some of that from there. Maybe even there might be um, something from the police grants or something. Yep. They often have access to a lot of really good, good items here. There. Cool. Yeah, we were quite surprised to find out that they wanted us to reroute the whole um, sidewalk configuration and it was folks could you have told us that a, yeah. a little bit earlier well and you know the whole idea is to get kids to walk to school and parents are a lot less likely to let their kids walk down Wentz than they are through the neighborhood streets mm -hmm. so i think that'll kind of cut down on the the, the effectiveness of the project mm -hmm. but we just got to do whatever they tell us to do Who, yeah. who's making you move it oh uh, that oh, no. There were, I think, three or four people from ODOT that were there, and interesting because a number of of the city people had indicated, you know, we we prefer it on the uh, the residential area, and the uh, the other folks ODOT were.
pretty much indicating that it's more acceptable to put it on when On a state highway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you Don't shoot the way. messenger. Yeah, well, we all kind of. Move it off of the city streets onto the state highway. Yeah. Well, um, a lot of, again, a lot of issues in going down the uh, the residential area. There were a number of locations where you you have the you know, say the street is up here, right. and this is where the sidewalk is, and then the the beginning of the lawn is actually down here sure. in a number of locations. And so looking from, okay, if we put the sidewalk on there, uh, that also starts taking a look at the whole no. stormwater drainage issue, and do we then develop problems with the homeowners that are down there. Sure. So between that and the ADA at the other location. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure, but <laughs> it, was, it was understandable. Well, the one thing that I really wanted to pick your, your <coughs> brains on um, at, in, in some amount of detail is our Complete Streets program. As you recall, probably about a year ago, we had an ordinance that we put up before City Council, which we used as part of our Healthy Communities grant application. They wanted to know if we had a ordinance or resolution um, in effect, and because we already had that, it helped us easily get through the, the grant process. The, um, the Complete Streets program, just to give you a little bit of an update, and this particular sheet on your thing, an introduction, uh, just for uh, memory jogging purposes, talks about what, what Complete Streets is. The idea behind having a, a ordinance put before council, approved, which it was, and in place is that we take a look at our entire street structure from the perspective of the purpose of the purpose of transportation and historically transportation from from our perspective and I think from everybody else's perspective is how quickly and how and, and how much uh, how many vehicles can you get down the road in uh, a certain period of time well as we're finding you know due to studies that have been done for obesity and, and health and such, there's more than one way to get from here to there. We don't need as many cars. We can walk, we can bike. Um, you can ride the trolley. You can ride the sure. trolley, absolutely. Sure. Um, and so in order, in order to promote that, we have to look at, at doing our streets differently. And that's what the ordinance said that was passed by council, was that in all locations where new roads are being put in, we need to take a look at allowing not just for motor vehicle traffic, but bike paths, pedestrian paths, um, if, if we can't do side, sidewalks for some reason because maybe the river flows by or, or something like that. But there, at the very minimum, there should be a trail, uh, preferably sidewalks, and, and definitely bike paths. Now, so that, that's what that, that introduction uh, pulls together. Because again, going back towards um, the, the motor vehicle, you're assuming, okay, you've got somebody over over 16 driving a car, and that's it. We're not addressing um, little ones who are, are uh, on bikes or, or walking, or people that are in wheelchairs. If we don't have sidewalks to enable those people, the mobility that they need to get around, then um, quality of life is immediately lost. You know, they, they do call the trolley, but you know. But sometimes getting them to the trolley is difficult. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But if they have that option to be able to get out on their own, you know, that helps tremendously. So, we are left with a wonderful uh, ordinance in place. However, I'd like to see and have a discussion about implementing that and, and how, we, how we push that forward. I think we can start addressing other areas that we can apply that resolution to. For example, in some cases, of course, we don't have the money to, say, put in new sidewalks, or we have an address maybe um, striping for a, a bike lane. Now, the ordinance specifically talks about, you know, when we have a, a new subdivision go in, then we need to address those types of things. We, quite honest to be, honestly, we don't have new subdivisions going in too often. So. I think what we should look at is, is a group is the possibility of, okay, piece by piece, rather than everything happening at one time, what can we do on a small incremental level to start putting some of these um, ideas into place? 
we could take a look at, at just striping, for example, instead of maybe having a, a sideline, just move it over a little bit to allow a little bit more room to have a bike go by. Um, you know, I don't think we need to go full tilt into an overall campaign to get some of these things done, but maybe instead of addressing all streets, and that's why the map is here, let's select a street. And what I'm looking for specifically is an entire route that we can have that can go through town. You know, maybe not just down division, but down division and then here and, and, and then out from one end to another. I, I have a question on that last grant we wrote. I think we put a thousand dollars for uh, marking bike, yes. like share the road type of stuff. Did that go right. through? Or are we still going with the thousand yes. dollars for that? Okay. Yes, and and we Could talked we use... about that. That that was the eight thousand dollar grant where right. some of the money was going to. So to that. is that something where we could on this road on this route we can say try to promote those mm -hmm. and specifically we can because mm -hmm. uh, we already have that is kind of an infrastructure we could figure out where we didn't really talk about exactly where that no, was going so that is correct and that's what i'd like to do now is say okay let's identify do we want to put bike trails down division which again same thing as, as near fogarty that's a that's a main um state highway i think do you, I, you know, would I, you I, prefer I, something that's a little more i think we looked into side? that a little bit and we found some of the roads were too narrow to throw in bike paths we really need to kind of look at what what the specs are uh, officially, and then what roads may be even classify as, as well, one of the, bike pathable. I mean, we did run into a lot of the width issues before, so we couldn't like yeah. designate it because I don't remember what the size was. But I know there are some roads that I'm around in, in Stillwater, um, mm -hmm. but they haven't necessarily like made <coughs> a bike lane. But maybe you know, you kind of mentioned it. You know, two feet from the curb. They just have a white line and it helps kind of move traffic away from that curb, you know, and give somebody that little bit of a buffer. Right. And so that may be a really easy type of, of solution, um, maybe in some more highly traveled neighborhood roads because we do mm -hmm. have a lot of um, street parking and extra. Right. A place like East of, or really Oklahoma that has a really wide road, I could that easily see. Of course, we have to move parking because so many people park. Right. Yeah. And you can move parking over two feet and have something. Right. I think if it part of this, I think, is, is education as well. Sometimes just the matter of painting a line a little bit off, yeah. off the curb is enough for people to say, oh my gosh, there will probably be a bicycle coming down here. I'll be careful and I'll move over just Especially a little bit. There should be a little signs here and there, a little paint. Right. down the street. But the, uh, that, the, that's when we kind of get into that shady area of you're supposed to, you know, standards are, are that you have bike lanes that are this wide, and if we're not following that, we probably don't want to paint that encourage, like, sure. this is a bike lane. But it is kind of one of those I mean, just Well, do we have any, subconscious any regs to, on bike paths so we know exactly what... We, we looked at a long time ago, and we had uh -huh. to abandon it, it seemed, because it was... It's just, we didn't have all the roads, and we... I But I was I still thought we could have, like, identified a, a road or two at that point. Because there's if, probably if a road or two that are wide enough. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, I'd like to, to see... No, I don't see at this point doing it on every road throughout yeah. town. But, you know, let's let's get started somewhere and identify a place where we can start. I'm, I'm not a avid bicycle rider. I know a lot of us are, however, Justin. And, you know, the streets that you go down most frequently, where would it help you? Well, I think, like, the, I think trying to appease, like, avid cyclists is not how we want to pursue it. Okay, that's I what I want to hear. You want to make it easier for the people who don't bicycle to feel safer. Okay. So I think maybe, like, approaching some of these streets that are already, you know, almost perfect for... Some of, the, some of these like, neighborhood streets are just all awesome for riding a bicycle down, maybe with the exception of one or two little things. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at, say, um, uh, uh, you got, you know, it's not on this map, but you know, the grocery store and some other little things in this part of this neighborhood, um, Cleveland, even though parts of it are, you know, uh, brick. Bulky. There's still a, a very little traffic down Cleveland. Mm -hmm. You have you can get an entire neighborhood 
down to the grocery store and then downtown with the the only little hiccup between like you know someone in this far end coming down Cleveland to Homeland and then to the downtown area is when you get to uh, Division <clears throat> there are I'm pretty sure I'm not tell me if I'm wrong but there's not any kind of like signal crosswalk at Cleveland and Division no and so there's no signal <clears throat> that that would be where the um, library is correct yeah. and so you've got also you've got destinations in the grocery store and a and a library for this neighborhood over here or if, especially with with kids who are riding riding their bikes, you know them being able to hit a uh, you know a, a signal there mm -hmm. uh, to even they get their get off their bikes and walk walk their bikes, which is probably what, what, what small kids to do that mm -hmm. to get out hit a signal and walk their bikes across a busy street like Division, but just having that uh, a, a signal there, um, you know, even though signals are expensive. Uh, but even yeah. if this the big ones usually run, yeah. believe it or not, around uh -huh. 160k. Yeah, but even if there's not, a, maybe if there's something, uh, I'm not sure, something, something else that maybe it's just um, you know striping or some, some kind of crosswalk, kind of mm -hmm. um, better crosswalk, kind of uh, paint in that area just to make it because um, the are library, good? the library at Division and Cleveland mm -hmm. is a is a big destination for yeah. a lot of different folks. Whether it's kids or senior citizens, a lot of folks use that library, and people who use the library a lot of times may not have a whole lot of transportation options. I don't know if you see do you see people that, that use your service to get to food from the library, or mm -hmm. that's several a day. Okay. So a lot of folks that you know visit the library may not have like their own personal you know ve like motor vehicle to mm -hmm. get there. So making it easier for people to access it might be something we can look at. Cleveland seems to be somewhere that we have a lot of walkers. When the weather's um, bad, you know, then they take us, but normally they may walk from the Temple area to Homeland to work or things yeah. like that. So So it's already a road that's not heavily trafficked by cars. Mm -hmm. and, you know, finding some little little ways to make it even better make it, that can turn that street into a way to get, you know, walkers and, and people on bicycle for, to and from a lot of different cool places around town. Mm -hmm. um, and the Sarah, lights on each side kind of help, I don't know, you know, to get across to the library. What's that? The lights, I mean, you can use the lights to, to be able to get across. Okay. You mean from the one on, on right, Noble? Right, it slows down the traffic, it's not like it, they're just zooming through there. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, are there it's your turning sort of, lane. Um, I mean, you're familiar with the green, you know, bike path signs. Are there any of those in that area at all? No. But that, I mean, no. if that was more of a common sight, do you think we could kind of direct somebody, you know, block south to cross? It's kind of tough to get people to do something like that. But yeah, I don't know. Since there is an existing stoplight there. So you're trying to say when they get down to that area, direct them down to the stoplight and go, go across? Yeah. Maybe so. I, the only thing would be if, if someone's using Cleveland as a way to get down to these certain areas, you know, <coughs> taking them off that route to come back. No, I know. I'll, I'll say this: I've run my bike to and from the library, and when I come out of the library, I come up to that stop sign in Cleveland. I have never even considered the possibility of going a block over and, and going through the light at Oklahoma. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm wondering never done on me. if signs would maybe yeah. help facilitate that, especially for kids. You know, yeah, parents saying yeah, you need to follow this because it can be difficult. I, you know, I'd be. Uh, when my son and I walk to breakfast on Saturdays, that's the route we take to walk. And there's times when it gets a little bit difficult just sitting there waiting for the, you know, the car is there to give us a break. And that's 7.30 on Saturday morning. So wow. Sometimes you're just like, okay. Can you put a sign there saying caution <coughs> pedestrians or something like that? Maybe so. And even it, if it's I, a lot of traffic. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember right now, off the top of my head, whether there's a crosswalk paint at all. I don't right think there. there's a crosswalk paint. There you just painting it's on the crosswalk. other side, is it? not the library side. I think it may be on the other side. Yeah, I'll have to but, look at but, it and see. Yeah, I think you're right. Even painting yeah. something there and yeah. you know making it really obvious and, and putting or is there a road sign that is there a road sign that indicates pedestrian you know crossing mm -hmm. on division on either direction? I'll have to look and see, no. see what's there. Now that we're talking about, I'm like, it's amazing how many times we go by something. Yeah, exactly. Right.
I don't think there's a lot of signage, signage right there. It seems pretty bare. But in terms of doing things that are not expensive, you can probably get more bang for our buck doing cheap things on the areas that are really kind of made for it now, yeah. as opposed to, to trying to tackle, you know, division down there where unless we can spend, you know, $3 million, it's going to be hard to get anybody to hop on a bicycle to go down division. Just to bring me up to speed, and, 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 oh, and Renee, did you get my voicemail today? So, yes, so I sure did. Thank you so much. And uh, I told him you'd be like, okay, but thanks. Um, are we talking about use of funds from that grant if we get the grant? We're just talking about talking just general? ideas okay. Okay. in general to, you know, help people walk and bike more. Right. right. Okay. Pretty much implementing the complete streets uh, ordinance resolution that we had put together about a, about a year ago. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, which called for doing things that, that promote walking and biking mm -hmm. instead of, mm -hmm. of driving. One thing I was thinking about is on the Scottish Rite Temple, since there is so much, you know, I live right near there, and you see just constantly people walking around mm -hmm. it. Um, if we s somehow made that a place, because Cleveland does hit that, but you can even think of like uh, maybe another route that it hits as well, going mm -hmm. a different direction, you know, because that's just a lot of people want to walk there, so they could walk to there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and walk back there and are things like that. Some streets so. just going north from there that really tie you into that other neighborhood section. I'll, I'll ride my bike around that area because they're 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 pretty wide. Again, Give me like uh, uh, where well, there's Capitol on one side and there's uh, Drexel on Drexel the other, the other side. Right to go north. Yeah, north. If that's what you mean. Yeah. So I mean, there are some great yeah. roads there that would be good to tie in. That we get that. Uh, well, you go to Highland side, Park. Yes, you do. You go to Highland Park down Drexel, across of course it's across Noble. So you have to work on that. Then to the Scottish Rite Temple down in Cleveland. I mean, there's mm -hmm. there would be a reason. Well, actually, the, the best thoroughfare coming this direction is Oklahoma Street, where we've just finished all of those. I mean, it's got all those new, the new sidewalks and those mm -hmm. street lights. So I would, I would, I mean, we already have a good path there. Yeah, the sidewalks are fantastic on Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would be a good spot to have, uh, like, just move, you know, a few feet over the bicycle path, mm -hmm. on the unofficial one, and say mm -hmm. shared road and stuff. That would yeah, be because it's nice and wide already. It's just all of those streets. If you're talking about a bicycle path or by any kind of bicycle indicator, all of those streets have parallel parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, up and down yeah. both sides. So. Yeah, something else that might be an idea for, you know, simple solutions for things. I think one I, one of the main barriers to like walking somewhere or biking somewhere versus you know hopping in a car is that a lot of folks it's difficult to plan that. Where if say I had to be at this meeting tonight, um, if I didn't know how long it takes to walk from my house to city hall, it's difficult for me to actually think that through. I'm like uh, forget it. I'm just gonna hop in a car and do it. Mm -hmm. But if we for some reason we we could develop some kind of like you know city map that shows us you know certain routes to take where it says okay I know that to roughly to get from the temple to the grocery store that's however long it's a generally you know a 10 minute walk mm -hmm. uh, to get from the grocery store to the post office it takes you about this long to, to walk it's kind of a, both a, a directional help to let you know like, what routes are the safest to walk or bicycle as well as like you know something that aid people in timing that out because someone has to you know it takes it takes more time to walk places and, and ride a bike so it's something that helps people that you know, don't do it all the time to be able to just to, to, to plan that simple you know uh, you know route through town might be something that would be helpful I'm smiling because I think this was in Heathrow Airport when we saw that we were rushing from one gate to the other and of course that's like a major city through there mm -hmm. and and there would be signs and it says terminal C this direction and it said 10 minute walk mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're sitting there you let you know you're lugging all you carrying all your luggage yeah. thinking 10 more minutes you know and then you get to the next point it says 15 minutes to, to this you know down this hallway wow. <laughs> well you know one that's thing organized, we yeah. could do is is um, highlight places that we think people would walk to and we could promote maybe some businesses and they could sponsor it so they would pay for the whole thing. You know, if they're mentioned, then 
they're there, you know, and, and we can highlight. Because I've seen maps where they actually show businesses all over it, and so you know where all the businesses are. Yeah. And you can have, like, how, to, how long it's going to take to get there by walking. So just a thought, and they can pay for it all. Maybe so. Sponsor it. It's optimistic. Well, I it's think, worth I, I, think if, I, yeah, I think a business a can difficult. put its name on something that are there's civic clubs. Yeah. yeah. Civic clubs. I don't think it's going to cost that much. We're talking paper and you know printing. It's not going to be thousands of dollars, but oh, you're talking about that on a paper map. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought, I, I, I thought you signed. meant on signs. No, no, oh, no. just oh, like okay. this thing and just put. Yeah, I was oh, just thinking okay. of like a, a you know a, a brochure kind of mm -hmm. kind of yeah. map that mm -hmm. more like our you know, the walking map of. of downtown Guthrie. Or you can have like Walmart, Walmart on one end and you know have like maybe one of the gas stations up here like a Love's and you can have you know mm -hmm. how long it takes to walk all these places mm -hmm. and we can think figure out where would mm -hmm. you might where you might walk. And, and this would be geared more towards uh, local citizens than tourists. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, sure. Because if, I, if someone asked me if I saw someone hey it's only a you know three quarters of a mile to get from your house to um, the post office to most folks, to like, was I don't even know how long that takes for me to mm -hmm. walk that quarter. Mm -hmm. That means nothing to me. But I say, hey, it's only a ten minute walk to the post office from your house. That's an entirely different, yeah. you know, description of mm -hmm. you know a motivating kind of thing. It doesn't take that long. Instead of driving to the temple and then walking around the square three times, you could just yeah. walk to the post office and back and sure. and, yeah, maybe come. And I think the reason people walk around the temple, I know the reason I walk around the temple is because you can measure it. You know how, what your distance sure. is. You know how many yeah. calories you're going to burn. So that might be something that helps from point A to point B. It's this distance oh, yeah. too. Absolutely. And we could list so many, you know, point so many miles, 15 minutes, 137 calories. You can say yeah. walk ten minutes, bicycle one point five minutes, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. There are some apps that you can get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know. but you have to know how far you went, things like that. Yeah, so you just create yeah. an app. <laughs> well, even something. I mean, Google has with any of their maps, you know, a bike option. Yeah. You know, if you think you're 